Good morning. What a what a beautiful morning to be here, and uh, an event that's uh, hopefully uh, uh, going to resolve a lot of issues that we have. I'm Merle Carter. I'm the uh, regional director of uh, Crime Stoppers of Puget Sound, and I'd like to just take a second to introduce uh, some of the dignitaries present with us. Uh, Mr. Thomas Bates, who's representing uh, Jenny Durkin from the U.S. Attorney's Office. Thomas is here. Also, uh, representing the Seattle Police Department, we have uh, Deputy Chief uh, Nick Metz. Let me give you just a little bit of the overview of the campaign. <clears throat> the uh, Who Killed Me campaign features billboards and bus ads to display victims' faces with the caption, Who Killed Me? Don't Stay Silent. The families of murder victims have teamed up with a, a number of sponsoring companies to promote a campaign that encourages people to come forward and share what they know about these murder cases. This very specific location is significant today because our campaign billboard, Who Killed Me, will be unveiled at the end of this program. Now the companies who have partnered together to make this campaign possible are the Seattle Police Department, Clear Channel Outdoor, Titan Outdoor, the Seattle Times, the Stop the Violence Campaign Committee, and the Q13 Fox television show Washington's Most Wanted. I also want to say a special thanks to the families of the murder victims for stepping forward and being willing to work with us, especially on this campaign. Lastly, I want to give a special thanks to the Filipino Community Center for allowing us to use this facility today. All of the funding for this campaign has been provided by the Seattle Police Department, Clear Channel Outdoor, Titan Transit Advertising, and the U.S. Department of Justice. Now the public will be encouraged to go to the Crimestopper.com website, the front page, where all this information you're going to hear today will be displayed, or they have the option to use the Crime Stopper hotline, 1-800-222-TIPS. At this time, I'd like to invite to the podium Reverend Harriet Walden from the Stop the Violence Campaign. Thank you. Uh, this is a great morning here in Seattle. The sun is shining, uh, and uh, we are really, really uh, moving forward with this campaign. Uh, my name is Reverend Harriet Walden, and I'm the director of the uh, Silent Work Campaign, and that's Breaking the Silence on Black on Black Crime and How We Harm One Another. Uh, and uh, we have many unsolved murder cases in Seattle, and we believe that someone in the community has information that can help solve crimes. These billboards will remind our community that someone knows something, and we believe that it's not okay to stand at the grocery store or be at the bus stop with a murderer. We're better people than this. We need to solve these crimes to be able to help the families uh, 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 as they move forward with their lives and to send a strong message out that, you know, violence is not okay. It's not okay in the big world and it's not okay in the little world here in Seattle. And this is a joint effort. This is a great partnership with the Seattle Police Department and all of the other people who are uh, groups that has been named here, 213 and all of them. I mean, it is a great partnership. And i like to send my condolence to all the families who have lost a loved one, who have a hole in their heart today. And we're here tonight. We can't mend that hole, but we can surely try to add some, some, some comfort to them uh, by working on a campaign to end the violence. Working on a campaign to say, if you know something, it's okay to come forward. It's okay to help solve a crime. And we hope that this billboard, this billboard would be the beginning of people calling the tip line. And uh, uh, you can be anonymous, but let's solve these crimes. Let's be better people than that. Let's say that we can move forward uh, uh, with a new agenda, a new normal, and a new normal is to stop the violence and the and the, uh, uh, spread the peace. Thank you. Now, 
I'd like to invite to the podium uh, Mr. Paul Baskom, who's the chairman of the African American Advisory Council. Good morning to you all. Again, I am Paul Baskom, chairman of the African American Advisory Council to the Seattle Police Department. And I want to give my condolences to the families that have lost loved ones here in their community. Unfortunately, we're in the days and times where we still need to come back together and consider what we're doing here. We've lost a lot of people in just the beginning of this year. And we need to come together and try to figure out how do we resolve this matter. It is a matter of us trusting each other. It's a matter of us trusting our communities. It's a matter of our trust, us trusting our law enforcement. But most important is about trusting yourself to be able to be strong enough to come forward, share information about what's going on, what you see, what you understand about going on in our community. There's going to be a lot of young people out there trying to figure out how this happens. Crime Stoppers has went to great lengths to make available to them the opportunity to be anonymous, using what they know best, being the texting, Facebook, or some of the other items that are out there that they can use to share information. We hope that they will continue to consider the outcome, the quality of life that they can create in their own community, and not be hackled by those who threaten and cajole them from coming forward and sharing the type of information that our law enforcement people need, that these families need for that are grieving for the loved ones that they lost. So I implore you all to consider sharing the time and effort that it takes to just get bits and pieces to the department, to law enforcement, so that we can all come together and be able to have a much better life in our city, which is a wonderful city, which is a wonderful country, and I hope all of us still consider ourselves Americans and do our part. Thank you. I'd like to uh, invite to the podium at this time uh, Marlo Williams, who is the mother of murder victim Desmond Jackson. My name is Marlo Williams, and I'm the mother of Desmond Jackson. That was murdered on February the 12th, 2012. <laughs> we had high Patience for him. That Desmond's murder has caused a huge impact on our family. Not even, not just the hurt and the pain that we suffer, but I have an eight year old son that walks in fear each and every day because of his dead brother's death. My hope for this billboard is that we can find justice. Desmond, and that we can find this person that murdered Desmond. And I also want to give this opportunity to say that if there's anybody, I mean anybody, that has any information that can help us solve Desmond's case, please, please come forward. to invite to the podium Valentina Vega, who is the sister of murder victim Danny Vega. I'm the sister, older sister of Danny Vega. It's been several months, 10 months since the day that this happened and my brothers Murder has not been solved. This has been a great pain for us, and I, I know the community is also hurting. I've lost many family members in the past, but not as painful as this one. I hope that this project will bring about a lot of information leading to the arrest of all the people who committed these crimes, not only to my brother, 
but to the other victims. I think all the uh, people and agencies involved in putting this project together, it's a very noble project. And my family, and I'm sure the rest of the families of the victims are very thankful for this. So we pray to God that Even if not all the murders will be solved, then at least some of them will be. We know that the lives of our family members who were murdered will never be given back to us. But it will be a great consolation if uh, some of these um, crimes will be solved. Thank you very much. I'd like to invite to the podium Marcia Westbrook, who is the sister of the murder victim Nicole Westbrook. were shot January 10th, 2010, and we believe that somebody in the North End knows what happened, and we just really beg you to come forward um, to say that, you know, murder is not okay, to um, be human enough to bring that information forward. Thank you. At this time, we will have a, uh, a brief question and answer period, and following that, we will have the unveiling of the billboard. So if you have questions, please uh, stand and speak audibly and, and who you would like to refer the question to. You know whether this has been tried in any other city and with what results? Sorry about that, Deborah. <laughs> uh, uh, um, I know to some degree that they've been done in other cities. Uh, we've, you know, obviously, over the years, we've seen things like uh, 
you know, missing children campaigns, those kinds of things. And the purpose of those campaigns is to make sure that we're doing everything we can to keep those individuals or the memories of the family members of these individuals alive to get whatever information we can to lead to justice. Deborah? Fear of people coming forward and all of that. Is fear is discussed as many things. How, how do you overcome that? Do you have a guide on how to overcome Her question, if you didn't hear it, was the fear of people maybe coming forward or the, or the distrust of coming forward. Um, I'm not sure if you heard or not, but yesterday uh, we made a very important arrest. Uh, in October, October 31st, 2008, Halloween night, a young man by the name of Quincy Coleman was gunned down near Garfield High School. That was four years ago, or almost four years ago. And in that four years, our homicide detectives, the family members of Quincy Coleman, and friends of Quincy Coleman, did everything they could to make sure that any information that came in just like Ms. Williams said back here, Ms. Jackson, you know, whatever little information we can get, we're going to act on it. We're going to look to, to it. And because of that information that came in um, regarding Quincy Coleman, uh, we were able to make that arrest just as he was walking out of a prison stint. Um, that happened yesterday. That's a very important um, example of why that information is so important. Whatever leads are out there, whatever information people have, they should never consider it too small. Um, it's been said a number of times that there are a number of ways that you can get that information to us, even anonymously. If you're not, if you're if you're worried about your identity being disclosed, you can you can contact Crime Stoppers through text tipping, uh, through the 1-800 number, or online. Um, and that information, again, we'll take whatever we can get and act on it. Our officers, our detectives, and our homicide unit have done an incredible job of following up on those leads and um, and making sure that we're doing everything we can to see justice prevail. Chief, how many billboards are going up in bus ads? How prevalent is this going to be around Seattle? And are you putting them in places where the victims were killed? Now, I'm sorry I don't have the exact number of billboards and bus ads, but they're going to be, there's, there's going to be a lot. Uh, they're going to be in various places uh, throughout the city uh, and on metro buses. Uh, they're going to be, the pictures that are going to be on those billboards are going to be based upon the zip codes of either where the individual or the victim either was known to live or hang out or where the incident occurred. So we're using that to make sure that people who may have lived around that area or may know that person, uh, that that, uh, that information um, spawns some thought and that they'll, they'll be willing to, uh, you know, whether it's just, just a call to say, hey, I did see this kind of car in this area, maybe it might be a help. We've solved cases on just those little bits of leads that have helped us uh, move forward. Chief, you've made That's several it. appeals in the past to the public to come forward. How is this different? What can you say to them that is different than your, your appeals in the past? Well, our appeals have been our appeals have been you know uh, sporadic in that whenever there's a press conference or something like that, then we obviously we put the, the, the appeal out or a press release. Uh, what this billboard is going to provide and what the signs on the buses are going to provide is that constant reminder to folks as they drive by. That every time they drive by, whether they see the pictures of somebody they know or a case that they're familiar with or some other case, it's going to create, you know, we're hoping that it's going to create uh, or cause them to think more and more about, you know, I need to come forward, I need to say something. And in the Quincy Coleman case, you know, unfortunately we didn't have this at the time. Uh, but because there were folks who were willing and courageous enough to provide information, uh, we took a we took a dangerous person off the streets. Mark. My name is Mark Morello, co-chair of the Philippine Advisory Council with the Chief of Police. First of all, thank you, Chief. Thank you for all these people who really spearheaded this kind of campaign. Very thank noble you. indeed. Uh, you mentioned Captain. Her you mentioned that uh, we have some billboards all over the U.S. And my question is, what's the success rate? Success rate of uh, this billboard? I, I can't say what the success rate is. I know that, that these types of campaigns have been used. Um, it's, a, it's just another tool in our in our in our box to uh, again get whatever information that we can um, to be able to put an exact number on what if they've been specifically successful. I can't say right now, but we're, you know, the, the police department, this community, um, we are committed to, to doing whatever we can to make sure we use whatever method to get information. Thank you.
Chief, the first half of this year was particularly violent. That sort of sparked all of this. And looking back at the cases, things have slowed down somewhat, even though there have been some shootings. What is the direct a reason for that, do you think? Is it, is it some of the drug busts you're doing? Is it the gun emphasis? What are you guys thinking right now is, is it caused it to slow down a little bit? I think it's a combination of things. Uh, number one, I think the community has stepped up and said this is not going to be tolerated. Uh, communities have come together and have built block watches, have, have uh, be, uh, created a better uh, source of communication with uh, the police department. Um, our media campaign through our website, through Twitter and others have contributed a great deal. People are feeling like they're getting information from us, so therefore they're going to provide information uh, to us as well. Um, but it's also uh, the police department has taken a very active role in our violence prevention emphasis patrols that we've been putting out through the weekends. We've been working with the community on determining where best to place those emphasis patrols, uh, and those have been those have been very successful. We've, there have been a number of situations where our officers have uh, prevented uh, serious violence from occurring. Um, or when it has occurred, they were right there to take immediate action and take those into custody. Chief, you have an opportunity right now with all these cameras to speak directly to people who know something. Mm -hmm. And what can you say to them about their fear and about their mistrust and about finally, you know, breaking their silence? Well, the first thing I would say is look at the families behind me. These folks have been hurting. They are, uh, I can't imagine going through the pain that they're going through right now. I've lost close friends to violent crimes, uh, but not a family member. Um, and I can't even imagine uh, the pain that they're going through. And so I guess I would appeal to people's hearts right now uh, to think about what that would feel like to them, that, that, that people have, I, in my mind, a moral duty, a moral obligation to come forward. Uh, and if they don't, again, we've made it clear that if they don't want to come forward and, and reveal their identity, there are ways to get that information to us. Somebody knows something. We've said that all along. Somebody knows something. Uh, people are out there who have information, um, and we're just asking you to take that, take that next courageous step um, and let us know what that is so that we can, again, see justice prevail. Chief, what role will the bad be Sorry. What role will the bad be uh, Thomas Bates from the Department of Justice answer. Thanks. My name is Thomas Bates from the U.S. Attorney's Office. We stand in partnership with the Seattle Police Department, our federal law enforcement officials, the King County Prosecutor's Office, to make sure that what we're doing as prosecutors, prosecutors as law enforcement, is bringing to bear to the fullest extent possible the harshest penalties that we can bring for people that are committing gun violence and other type of violence in the city of Seattle. Several months ago, we announced what was essentially a zero-tolerance policy for, for gun possession and gun violence in the city of Seattle. And in partnership with the Seattle Police Department, our federal partners, our law enforcement partners like the FBI, DEA, ATF, we are working on cases of gun possession and gun violence and taking those cases federally where we can get more penalties for people who are perpetrating gun violence and gun crimes in, in our city. Uh, just yesterday, uh, a man, a defendant, was sentenced to 14 years in prison for possessing a firearm in the city of Seattle. He had, uh, in the event that occurred, a person was shot and killed by this defendant. Uh, we determined with the King County Prosecutor's Office that uh, a crime, uh, 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 charging the crime where the person was killed might not be a viable option because of a self-defense claim. So what we did is took that case federally and, and, and got uh, the defendant 14 years in prison where if he was just in the state system, he might have uh, been able to have gotten off entirely. So we're trying to be very targeted and very smart about how we're attacking gun violence in this city. And, and it's, it's unbelievably humbling to stand here with the courageous family members who are asking people in our community to show that same kind of courage and dignity and humanity in solving these crimes. And they should all know that law enforcement is stand, standing ready to take that evidence and work up cases to make sure that justice is done. I think at this time, we appreciate all the questions and uh, I'm going to kind of defer to Elaine Kitamura. Are we ready to unveil the sign? We are. I give these guys a lot of courage up there.
Wait, move up. Wait. At this time, the, uh, the formal part of this program is concluded. Uh, feel free to stay, ask questions, take pictures. We do thank you very much for this great turnout today, and hopefully this campaign will be very, very successful. Thank you very much.